This is not even a Makinata coffee, she just gave me. No, but to make your video, you need 10,000 subscribers. Okay, Jeffrey. You have to appear to an international community. But everybody, not in Rammstein, is like us. First of yeah, all, everyone has been waiting in the queues for you. Every ja, ich glaube, das ist so subkult, das ist ja dieses Duf, 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 Duf. das ist Subculture. Ja, ich hoffe, wir haben einen Nord. People said we have you need Nord. Hello everybody to my huge channel. This is my second video, as I asked on Instagram. I wanted to know if you're more interested in, in the Givenchy uh, background story and um, with a new creative designer that's gonna be Matthew Williams from the Leaks, as you know. Or if I just should talk about some brands I'm totally interested in that are falling under the fashion radar and that definitely need a lot more attention. Um, and I think 95% wanted to know which brands I'm totally into. So I'm going to talk about these ones now. And I also want to prove you that you will definitely not find any lack of creativity, innovation and maybe also diversity with these designer brands and totally not even think about a single second about any big players as Louis Vuitton or Chanel or Dior or anybody else. Um, I don't want to say anything against these ones, uh, but you should definitely consider thinking a, bit, a little bit more about niche brands and these are brands you will definitely hear a lot more about in the future times. Also, when I say big players, I never implicate uh, Prada because that's like the only big player I will never say a single negative word about and uh, that's without discussion the only brand I love to its core. So, do you think you can leave my kitchen without finishing your coffee? Oh, I got coffee! Yeah. Is it your coffee? coffee? Is the leftovers. I'm mean, totally a sweet stuff eater. But so don't eat too much of it, you will get fat and not fit in your designer clothing. Mm, this is a cocos happen. Mm. It's like the best thing that's happened to this universe. I love it. So, um, the first brand I want to talk about is Wales Bonner. Um, the designer behind the label is Grace Wales Bonner. She is a Central St. Martins alumni and um, also won the British Design Award, I think. Not sure how all these awards are called, but I think it's a British Design Award, Fashion Award in Mansfield or something. Anyway, she won it and um, she's super good. I love her designs. Um, she has a very specific language uh, in her design. You see a lot of African inspiration, you see a lot of West Indian um, in uh, inspiration, it's very intersectional. And you see all of these designs combined in Western European tailoring and this is something I'm a huge fan of and no matter how cool a streetwear brand, a high piece brand can be, I think nothing can go uh, top a good tailoring, a good tailor and this is something you can definitely see in her designs, uh, in her trousers, in her short jackets, they look a little bit like uh, Tolero jackets of the um, Spanish people and I love that about it. Uh, she implements some color codes that you are more used to see in the Western Indian parts of the world. So I really like to see the combination of intercultural things together and um, I also really love her the language she speaks with her pictures, her lookbooks are great. I think she's also doing fashion for women's now, but she definitely started with menswear, which is also pretty interesting to start with menswear as a, a woman designer. I think you do not see that too often. And that's definitely a name you will hear about. I hope you're gonna hear more about. And um, brand number two I want to talk about is Azai, or Azai, I'm not pretty sure how you pronounce it. It's um, also a British designer, his actual name is Azai Ta, and he was born in Britain and is the child of a Vietnamese mother and a Chinese father. He also uh, told once in an interview that he came into designing while watching his seamstress mother working at home. Um, I love to hear these childhood memories and to realize like when was that seed planted uh, first in their head, you know, when did they really want to uh, start designing. And I think the, uh, the item he's most famous for is the technical law tie-dye top. Um, that's very, yeah, that's pretty famous and also the Rihanna dress, um, they uh, personalized and designed for her. You definitely see that Azaita is trying to deal with his identity and race and heritage with this brand. Um, he's, the products are called like Hot Work Walk Shirt. Um, I think it's pretty cool if you see that in the design, you know, when there's like um, different cultures combined in the single products. and. Uh, many of the de designs I want to talk about do these, they implement like the heritage and the influences well, they, they generate. Yeah. 
and everything is stolen uh, but things they experience so that's pretty cool and um, that's why I also like the brand as I a lot and um, I'm also pretty happy to see that they get uh, a lot of attention on um, social media and I think they totally deserve that. That's very you nice. see my breast? Uh -huh, I don't have any. The next brand I'm going to talk about, brand number three, I actually wanted to you know, give these brands some numbers but I don't care anymore. It's just another brand I'm totally interested in. It's Coperni, the French um, brand uh, by the designer duo Sebastian Maya and Arnaud Vaillant, I guess. And it's Copernicus. Copernicus? Ah! They forgot it! Oh, I never thought they forgot of that. The Copern course, they do you think it? I don't think it has anything to do with Copernicus. Um, anyway, um, you they have very sharp silhouettes. Uh, you see that they um, take a lot of inspiration from haute couture. I think they also worked with Courage for a while, which was a big brand, a uh, French brand in the 60s. Um, definitely more concentration of more single items and on a whole collection. So what I like about it is definitely that it's very sharp, that it's also very understated, um, very good tailoring also, um, and um, also the color sc uh, scheme they choose is usually very simple, very minimal. That's definitely something I um, like a lot about the brand. It's definitely a brand that seems very minimal, but it is also, on the other hand, not monotonous at all. And that's something I like a lot. I like that it's repetitive and um, it's not monotonous, but it's still minimalistic and kind of modern, also uh, feminine, definitely feminine. Maybe you should also know what kind of big player brands I'm also interested in to get a clue of what niche and smaller brands I'm interested in. It's definitely, like I said, Prada. It's definitely Balenciaga. I love what Demna does. Um, not everything he did for Vetmore, but um, I um, totally love what he did to Balenciaga. Other brands I'm, I like a lot is Löwe uh, with Jonathan Anderson, of course. Um, I like, uh, I love his complex designs. I love that it's a lot more versatile and I think it's very aesthetically pleasing what he does. Um, I think if I would go on holidays in Capri, I would wear Rosia Sulin. Um, that is also, I mean, she's not that underrated. Uh, she's also, I would say, a big player now, but and not maybe the most typical summer dress brand still. So um, that's a brand I love a lot. And what other brands do I like? Yes. You ask me which ones yeah. you like? Yeah, the big I ones. Know, you, you know the big ones? Yeah, stuff. but we have, uh, not the weirdo stuff, the, good, <laughs> the famous stuff. Okay, the famous stuff. Oh, this is uh, Prada, you said? I said Prada, but I said Prada. Yeah, usually you always say Prada. Love, love, love. Love. Prada, Balenciaga. You said big one. Is it small? No. With the more? No, it's small. It's the same design. It's the same design. Okay. Jill is out now. Unsere Deutsche. You know, Deutschland. Now I implement Rammstein, the new song. Deutschland. But to Lindemann is like. Oh, you know these guys not bad. Name <laughs> <is so good. laughs> uh. You have to appeal to an international community. But everybody in Rammstein is like most. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Richard Quinn. Uh, this is one of the labels. When I said in my first video that there are many uh, big player brands, and I was thinking about Balenciaga and Demna in that uh, moment, that also have um, definitely take some inspirations from the smaller brands I'm going to talk about today. Um, one of them is uh, Richard Quinn. Um, he had this. He has this very famous sweater with um, glove sleeves, you know, it, it looks like it's like one piece and I think it looks super good. It's, um, it has these floral embellishments or floral uh, patterns on it and um, I think it looks crazy good. Uh, you see it in a run runway in total of floral looks, but I would just wear like uh, the top and wear a navy blazer over it, a navy pant, and I think there's nothing cooler than have fitting gloves to my top to it. Um, and I thought, uh, yeah, you can go to the supermarket while it's Corona. I think, yeah, yeah, it's very Corona friendly. You know this also. You should maybe think about that. Also, and um, I thought it's, it was pretty funny because he, um, Richard Quinn showed it, I think, the first time in his Fall 17 collection and you saw just the season afterwards, so you definitely see that Demna got inspired by it. It's not even inspiration, it's just like the same fucking design, so. The last brand I'm going to talk about is also the brand I love the most concerning niche brands. They're super cool. Um, it's... I have never experienced another brand that is that versatile, that diverse, that 
constructed, deconstructed, but, but also on the other hand it has functionality. Um, it's also a bit yeah, like... You can always need like a fifth sleeve. You always need it. Yeah. It's definitely a brand that requires a manual uh, when you buy, uh, buy their products because you don't usually always get what it's about. But so, that's something I love about fashion. That's why I also love brands like Muzo Magella or... Um, you know, also Marnie, a little bit Comme des Garçons, the more avant-garde brands that tend to have those unnecessary things uh, that is called design about them. And um, yeah, I just love it, you know, I love it when I see a blouse that is not just a blouse, you know, that's what this beauty is about. And that's what Glam Martins and my project is about. Also, the only one that is not uh, a Central Saint Martins graduate, he's from, he's a Belgian, I think, and he's from the Royal Academy of Antwerp or something. And um, you also learned uh, with Jean-Paul Gaultier and I think you definitely see some um, inspiration maybe from Jean-Paul with the drapes. Um, he has these very popular polo shirts um, the, uh, with these sleeves that are like constructed around your neck and you're like, hey, are you supposed to like, you know, straighten your top or is it just, should it stay like that? And it definitely should stay like that. Um, I love that about him. I love his pants that are not just, just pants. I mean, you maybe uh, have seen his very famous jeans. I mean, these are hot pants, you know, you know, hot pants and then they're just like, it's like jeans underwear, but um, I love that about him, his usual pants. The shoes are a whole nother story. I love the accessories and there are really not many brands where I like, like every category of the brand, but the accessories are great. The shoes are great. The handbag, I love the denim, he's doing, I'm not usually not a denim fan, but he's just working so well with it and I just read in an interview that he's also thinking of giving out a manual because the latest collection they had in Paris now, you know, you couldn't do it, um, they just did it viral and you don't get the designs too good while looking at the lookbook, so he said like, yeah, you know, we're also thinking of giving out some manuals to teach people how to wear our designs properly. And, yeah, you have and to select the right sleeve to put your arm into. Yeah, like what sleeve you're actually supposed to put your arm into. Um, yeah, and um, and what I think makes this brand like super interesting and super good is that it seems like it's a streetwear brand because it's not the it's not haute couture, you know, it's not um, and it doesn't seem like it's very Polish. But on the other hand, it seems like super avant-garde and super haute couture because you do not see these kind of designs somewhere else. Uh, and um, he's like the René Magritte of uh, fashion. Like I said, there are like uh, not many brands who think um, yeah. beyond uh, like maybe Magella or Ray Cabot Boku. Uh, so that's something I definitely think only Glenn Martins does right now. And um, he's definitely still underrated. Um, I just love his awkwardness. I think awkwardness always wins and also should win. And that's definitely something he does. And um, yes, that's about the five brands I'm totally into right now and that I will totally check out on sale right now. And if you have any recommendations, tell me because I'm um, also a shopaholic a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to get curated from this, but I haven't found the remedy for this yet. The only remedy is a credit card that never ends. Um, if you want more videos, tell me because I'm not aware of it. She will not stop, else she will just not stop. <laughs> I won't stop, no. <laughs> I really don't know if uh, it's like necessary for another person to make more videos. So tell me if you like this and uh, subscribe to this channel because this is like the only way I can see it. And comment, I'd be super happy about that. And that would be super good. That would be super good. I also don't know if okay, I like it. My, I'm going to my call. I have calls until 6.30 now. Okay, do that. Is that okay for you? Yep. Yeah. Wow.